Hi, my name is Michael DeMilo. This is a spoken word poem titled Her. Um, there's going to be a trigger warning for talk about um, parental abuse, eating disorders, um, self-harm, um, abuse, and several other triggering themes. Um, this poem is only intended for audiences 16 and above. Thank you very much. Now on to the poem. I've been so numb. My eyes filled with static, ears with erratic frequencies. I taste the cold metal of a blade. I used to suck on pennies because they'd create electricity with my space maintainer. I'd have been better off if they'd just removed my back molars. Back then, back when I first met her, ocean eyes on my heart, titanic at the feeling of someone there for me. Little did I know... She'd be my iceberg, my slow burn. I'd fall in love with her again and again, only to break things off because things got a little too out of control. I always thought I was in control. I craved that control. My mother screamed, she's changed you, as if I wasn't always like this, a star approaching its final hour, as if they gave me the time or the care to even be aware that I was always ill. You're not supposed to taste blood when you run. You're not supposed to taste blood when you run. You're not supposed to taste blood when you run. It seems so obvious now, but as a child, I assumed that it was absolutely normal. Normal to be unable to focus on reality, unable to remember chunks of my life, thinking that everyone's parents gave them welts and scars that no one could see. Spinning lies they've told themselves for far too long to the echoing song of I turned out fine. What a fucking lie. None of us turned out fine. We were just collateral damage in their anger. She taught me how to breathe without them. How a bee sting or a scraped knee can be invigorating because I'm still capable of feeling not for long, not for long. Life's a sing-along you've never heard with an erratic melody and tone-deaf harmonies of hatred and injustice. Children shouldn't be sent to bed without food. Children shouldn't be denied food because they aren't skinny. Children shouldn't have to starve as a punishment or as a cosmetic choice. How dare you? You tell me you're not responsible for a 10-year-old starving themselves to meet your standards. How dare you tell a 10-year-old that their diet is saving you money? How dare you tell your child that they are a financial burden? How did you think you could keep me from her? She gave me promises of how to take the pain away, kissed my scars, and told me I could control everything if I wanted to. I hated you because she told me you were lying. It was one of the few true things she ever told me. She caressed my legs and arms, leaving needle-thin scars that made me feel alive. We could only use pins and needles because if you'd found them... You'd have hurt me worse. She held my hand when you threw me into the abyss for a replacement. You stole my name and gave it to someone else. How dare you tell me I can't change it or disrespect my identity. I was locked up at 16 for getting too physical with her. I met other of her lovers at a facility where we sung her praise in a language the guards could not understand. They punished us her feeling and took away our autonomy. When you called me, you told my siblings I said that they weren't good enough to be alive anymore. Children shouldn't be blamed for being suicidal. Victims shouldn't be blamed by the ones who hurt them. No one should be gaslit. But there you were, holier than thou. I was pathetic, and you were to fix me with prayers as if words meant anything to me when I knew you lied through your teeth. I stopped respecting you the day you called me fat, the day I turned nine. Children grow out before they grow up, you fucking monster. No wonder why I fell for her. I moved out at 18, knowing if you knew I could love anyone, you'd kill me if you could. You'd throw me out. I remember the day you told me I could never leave, and when I turned 18, you'd keep me here. And because I wasn't a child anymore, no one would care or come for me. But she did. We lived in a house together with a dog and cat baking cookies and singing each other asleep. She told me she was a walking problem. And I told her that I'd try to fix her, ignoring my own. 
She agreed so readily she needed me to kiss her thighs with the same mouth I bit her. She wanted me to hold her with the hands I used to choke her and pull her hair. She needed me to worship her. And I was her lone living servant. I didn't know how to do anything but serve. I thought I was a bottom because of it. But she quickly corrected me. She was there when I found out all over again I didn't know myself that my own name and body was a lie sold to me by people who didn't give two shits about me or the package I came in as long as I looked like a statue that they could present as their own as if I hadn't carved myself into the masterpiece of a mask I presented terrified of letting the world know. I was plaster-coated paper clay. People would chip away my outside only for the heat of their hands to harden my insides. She watched me let others take away my control, love after love, till I found someone who had a cold enough touch to reactivate my core. Someone who let me be soft, she... She didn't like that. She screamed about the work we'd done. We needed control. They wouldn't let her have control. She had to break things off. But she still visits. Her thirst is unquenchable, and I look like a cool glass of water with a lemon slice and a tiny umbrella. I can't say no to her. I've had this problem with lovers who've wronged me. It always starts with this one thought. What if I can change her and we can get a happy ending after all? You shouldn't have to change someone. You shouldn't have to change someone. You shouldn't have to change someone.